as always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? I thought about going with Sony Michelle. Um, was there at New England, got traded to the Rams for a couple of draft picks. And I got to tell you, man, I think this is an awesome move for him. They've had injuries there at the running back position in L.A. They brought Stafford in. They got a defense that is absolute nails. That team is in win-now mode, and they had to make something happen. We know Sony Michelle's a guy that can do a lot of different things. He's good in the, uh, the run game. He's good out of the backfield. I think he fits that scheme perfectly. Also, he doesn't have to play for the Patriots anymore, <laughs> which I think at this point, you know, winning's awesome. There's no doubt, but they don't have Tom Brady anymore. And it doesn't sound like it's the most fun time to play for that organization. That's just what I've gathered from gentlemen uh, I've talked to that have played there. Now, winning's great, but I, I got a feeling, you know, McVeigh's vibe is a little different than Belichick's. Just a feeling. It does, it does get that feeling. That team's going to be really good. He's, I, I think that's going to be a, a really good fit. But I ended up going with, because I'm just enamored with this, I've watched it like 10 times, the drone shot from Hard Knocks. Is that not the coolest thing ever? It, it's amazing is what it is. Whoever, like, do we know who was flying the drone? I don't, but that's like a legitimate occupation now to be a drone pilot. And they wear like a, a helmet that's got like a display in it. Have you seen it? Have you seen them yeah. do like the drone racing? It's so cool. And I, that was amazing. Now, some of the outtakes at the end were funny whenever, you know, he was crashing into stuff, but that that's just so cool. I mean, to think that, and I know that's, that's probably an expensive drone, but like, it wasn't very long ago to get like even an aerial shot in a movie required like a helicopter and like all of this crap. And now you got a little, little drone that's got an awesome camera on it and you can get shots like that. I thought it was just the coolest thing ever. I, I was blown away by it. Like it, it just kept was it, going and going well, and going. Was it just me? And if you haven't seen it, go watch it. There's this drone shot from hard knocks of the Cowboys practice facility. They call it the star. It's, I mean, it's so cool. Which was after you see the drone shot, you know your way around the entire star. You see the you see every single room basically. At, at any point, were you like, "Oh, this is fake"? This, they just CGI'd this. Like at some point, I was like, "Yeah, this is fake," and then I was like, "No, this is real. Is it fake? Is it real?" Like it was so maybe disorienting is the wrong word, but like I was like, "What the hell is happening right now?" As so, I was watching it, it was so perfect that. It looked fake. Yeah. Yes. No, yes. That's a great way of describing it. Yeah. It, it was, it was amazing. I it, it's, it's, it's amazing. And it's maybe the best two minute camera shot that I've ever seen. <laughs> only, only shitty part about it. And it was awesome. It was unbelievable. And kudos to NFL films. That was, it was so cool, but it's unfortunate that that was the best part of hard knocks. <laughs> <laughs> because this season of Hard Knock was a snoozer, man. It's so boring. Just yeah. give me all Jerry Jones. Just I just follow Jerry Jones around. Because at least he's going to say something goofy, funny, folksy, whatever you want to call it. Like, oh, man, it's boring. And then he gets in his helicopter to leave the stadium after the preseason game. How awesome is that? They should get a drone shot alongside the helicopter. I have, you, have you ever seen? I, I, Probably wouldn't was, work. Now that I think about it, that would get do, caught in the, yeah, the prop. Yeah, that, was a, that was a horrible idea. I just had, um, I've seen this drone footage of a guy that's one of the, has one of the super fast ones. And he like goes back behind his friend that's on a golf course and is timing it up with his friend hitting like tee shots onto a par three. And is like a couple of feet behind the golf ball and follows it from the shot all the way down onto the green. It is amazing. You want to talk about a drone shot that looks fake. I'll have to find it and 
uh, send it to you. Yeah, it's send awesome. that to me. It's cool. Okay, who do you have as your loser of the week? <sighs> it's plain and simple. The naked baby from the Nirvana Nevermind album cover, one of the most famous album covers of all time. Uh, whether you like Nirvana, don't like them, everyone knows the album cover. It's the baby that's swimming underwater and they've got like the dollar bill in there. And um, I guess it was 30 years ago, 1991 is whenever that picture was taken. The guy's name is Spencer Eldon. He was the baby. And he's recreated the picture uh, several times, like the 10 year or 15 year, something like that. He's done it a bunch. Oh, so he and likes the picture. Oh, yeah. Well, you would think originally um, his parents were paid like two hundred dollars for the photo shoot. And I think he got paid like a couple hundred bucks to recreate it. But he's now decided to sue the band uh, claiming that the picture is child pornography. Now, we all know that's not the case. We all know that he's never had a problem with the picture. I can, to a certain degree, respect the money grab, okay? And he's asking for 150 k from a couple of different defendants, which maybe is smart because it's low enough to where they say, uh, take your money and, and go. But I feel like you should ask for more money. Courtney Love is like estimated to be worth like $500 million because of the Nirvana rights. I think you could ask for more than 150 K. So, so hold on. <laughs> He's not your loser because <laughs> he is suing Nirvana for child yeah. pornography. He's your loser. Cause you think he's not suing yeah. them for enough. Yeah. Both. <laughs> I think, I think he could have asked for like, 300 K from all of the defendants and go away money. You know, we know what this is. It's a money grab. Go away. It's going to cost our lawyer. However much anyways, take the money and go. I, he's a loser for doing it, but he's also a loser for not asking for the right amount. Right. And he knows that Dave Grohl has been rather successful post Nirvana, right? Sure. That's right. That's right. I feel that like is... this is one of those, because Dave Grohl every now and then, he likes a, a bit of a stunt. And I could see him, like, taking this thing and running with it and making fun of it and, like, blowing it up oh, somehow. I can't wait to hear him talk about it. <laughs> I mean, it's going <laughs> to be probably awesome. going to write a song about it. I, I will say this. To, to anyone in a band that listens to this podcast, you can, you can put a naked picture of my baby on your album cover. Now, it's the, I'm telling you right now, I have not told my wife that I would do this, so the price is going to be steep. I'm talking <laughs> real steep, but we can negotiate. I will, I will put... My naked, what, nine-year, nine-year, nine-week-old son up up for bidding. Now, I'm not going to put him go. underwater. No, 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 no. He's not ready for that. Huh. Well, there you go. Let's see if you get any offers. Ah, uh, we'll see. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. This is all just a setup for me to have him sue them later in life, Ted. Yeah, 30 years down the road, you can sue them. Ted, for my winner of the week, thought about going with whoever flew that drone. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to do that one, too. That was really good. But that, that was awesome. And we were on the same wavelength, man. But I thought about going with Ramondre Stevenson because the Patriots traded Sony Michelle to the L.A. Rams. Did you see that quote from the running back coach? What'd he say? Oh. Uh, he basically went scorched earth on OU. He said, I'll, I'm just paraphrasing right now because I don't have it in front of me, but he said, um, I don't know what they're doing at Oklahoma, but he was not 
ready to play in the NFL. Um, talked about he was out of shape. He didn't pass his physical, didn't pass the conditioning test. Like, <laughs> it's like, it said that I don't know what they were doing at Oklahoma, but they weren't getting him ready for the NFL. That's a bad statement. And there's usually, I thought there was like a good, like, got a lot like, of OU guys, a lot of OU guys. And Lincoln has spoke highly of the Patriots. The Patriots have spoke highly of Lincoln in his office. They've like, or his offense, they've gone in and like exchanged notes. I thought that was crazy, but no, you're right. Ramondre, definite beneficiary. Yeah. Uh, the former Sooner will get some more carries. Maybe, I don't know now after what that coach is saying. Good God. But my, my winner of the week, J.R. Smith. I did. I love this story. And some people just remember J.R. Smith for the LeBron meme when he didn't realize that they were losing. Some may remember him as the guy that threw a bowl of soup at one of his assistant coaches, but he did make like over $90 million playing in the NBA, but he's my winner of the week because he is going to college. Ted, remember he went straight out of high school to the NBA. And if my memory serves me correctly, he actually played in the McDonald's all American game that was here in Oklahoma city. And yeah, I'm pretty sure he lost right. the dunk contest to Candace Parker, which I'm just full of fun facts apparently, yeah. but he still has NCAA eligibility because he came straight out of high school. Just has to be in a different sport. Can't be in basketball, obviously. And he is enrolled at North Carolina, a and where he has been deemed eligible by the NCAA to play college golf. He is 35 years old, Ted, and he is back in college to play some golf and to get his degree in liberal studies. And he's got the best part about it. He's got to follow all the same rules as his teammates, right? He's, he's going to study hall. He's going to 6 a.m. workouts. He, he's, he's getting class checked. Like he's doing all this stuff that you and I went through. And I'm just imagining J.R. Smith, who's all, who almost made $100 million playing basketball, is going through all that. I, I love it, man. I love that he's going to get his degree. He's trying to – and he's, if you haven't seen his tweets about it, it's, they're, they're fantastic. But I, I just – this is one of my favorite stories of the year. I love it. I, I think it's really cool. I hope he, I hope he sticks it out. You know, um, it's – I'm not going to say it's easy. It's never easy to play a professional sport, but whenever you're like a sixth man and you're making $12 million a year, it's not that hard to have the, um, you know, to get up early, to go do what you need to do. But when you're not making anything and those early workouts are calling and which, what are they making the golf team do at 6am? Um, but I, I don't know. I'm, I hope he sticks it out. And I wonder what their marijuana testing policy is at uh, North Carolina a and I, I would assume flexible. <laughs> I would assume flexible. But he, he did have a tweet, and it said, everyone around the city keep asking me, who you got doing your work? And he said, shit, me, LOL. I'm trying to learn something. <laughs> I, I just love it, man. I And I hope. It would be so cool. Like if their golf team ends up being awesome, I think he's a hell of a golfer. So I, yeah, he's like a, what was it? He's like a, like a four or five handicap or something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, dude can play some golf and just getting his degree. I love it. I mean, I, I think it's an awesome story. Okay. For my loser of the week, thought about going with pistol Pete because <laughs> this is, I mean, a, a company called quality logo products did a survey and pistol Pete was voted the worst mascot in the entire country. Pistol Pete was voted the fifth most offensive mascot in the country and the third creepiest mascot and <laughs> their reasoning. They like did this thing where they announced it and they said with this massive head blank stare and disproportionately small body. It's not hard to see why. Every mascot has a massive head and disproportionately small body, right? Isn't that almost like the point of a mascot to have the big head and huh? that's, yeah, that's I feel kind bad of the thing. for Pistol Pete. What, 
the fifth most offensive. What's what could be offensive about Pistol Pete? It's the guns. I'm assuming. I I don't know who voted <laughs> oh, in the yeah. survey, but I got a feeling. <laughs> I got a feeling it was. That cap gun that he's shooting off is just offensive as could be. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Cowboys offensive. I, I, I don't know. I guess you know. You go back to some of the some of the historical context. I don't know, but it, I just thought it was funny. I thought oh, I was that's, like, man, I think it's great. I feel bad for him, but uh, it's still funny nonetheless. But my loser of the week, your man Ted Cam Newton. Oof. Cam yep. Newton, and he, he'd been playing well in camp. I mean, looked good in the preseason game against the Eagles. Looked like he was going to be the starter for the Patriots. But then some sort of miscommunication goes on, right? He goes to an out-of-state doctor, but the team knows about it. Somehow violates the NFL's COVID-19 protocols due to some misunderstanding with the test conducted away from the facility. So he has to miss practices. I mean, he has to miss time during a very important time leading up to the season. Remember, he's only on a one-year deal. So there, and there's already reports, right? There, there's a certain level of frustration within the organization about the entire situation. And Bill Belichick was asked about it. And Belichick already said, Cam missing practice was a great opportunity for Mac Jones to show the team what he's got. And with Cam out, that is exactly what Mac Jones did reportedly because he's been taking all the reps with the ones in practice and Wednesday, Mac Jones got all the first team reps in the Patriots joint practice against the giants, where according to reports, He was fantastic. Mm. 35 of 40, including going 21 of 24 in 11 on 11 drills. Couple of touchdowns to different guys. And at one point, Ted ripped off 18 completions in a row. Wow. Pretty impressive. Which, by the way, someone was talking about the quarterback rating record. I was going back and looking at, at some of them. And Sarkeesian's last three quarterbacks have all been over a 200 rating. And Kyler wasn't 200 when he won the Heisman. Baker wasn't. I think Mac Jones was like 202 or 204, something crazy like that. Tua was 206. So he's an efficient player. We know that. It sounds to me almost like Belichick, when asked about it, was saying, we're on to Mac Jones. You know, it's kind of how it felt. Yeah. We're on to Mac Jones. uh, There's this phrase that Bill Belichick is known for. And that phrase is do your job. And Cam Newton wasn't even there. So that's kind of the opposite of the whole mantra for that organization. Yeah. I, I, uh, here's the thing. I don't think that. I guess I don't know necessarily what they think of their team, but I I would be surprised if they thought they had a Super Bowl caliber team. If you've got an opportunity to go with Mac Jones, develop him, you don't want to throw him to the wolves and ruin his confidence. But if you think that he's shown that he's going to be the guy in the future and you can go with him without having a, a guy that, like Cam Newton that can be unreliable, can be injury prone, then then do it. I'm not sure what his contract is, but I know it is a team-friendly contract, not a player-friendly contract with Cam Newton. So Hoyer is the other backup there. So there's a lot of people that feel like they may cut Cam Newton. Mac Jones is your starter. Brian Hoyer is a serviceable backup. Yeah, only 3.5 million guaranteed for Cam Newton. Allegedly. And I don't know if they cut him before he makes the roster. Is that is it is that yeah, you'd have to, you have to make the roster first for it to be guaranteed, or I don't know how that works. Yeah, he got two million at signing and a one point five million full 
fully guaranteed base for 2021. So we'll see. We'll see, I'm sure. And if I remember correctly, it can end up like at like 14 million or something if he hits a bunch of incentives. Like it's very incentive laden. So we'll see. But does it seem like he put himself in a good spot, man? It, It doesn't. And it's it's feeling like it's Mac Jones time already. Isn't it really weird though? Like, how do you miscommunicate something like that? I don't know. It's not like it's a, oh, by the way, we do have to do some COVID testing here. Yeah. Well, so. it's, I mean, it's obvious that he's an unvaccinated guy, but that's not the issue. Like, there, there should have, like, the plan, it should have been clear, right? To him, I don't know. I, I'm with you. I don't know how there was any misunderstanding at all I, I, I'm on confused. either side. Like, I don't know right, how, yeah. how they were like, oh, okay. Yeah. You can go see that doctor. Oh, uh, maybe they didn't know that he was as far away or whatever. Conspiracy theory. Belichick yeah, was like, Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You take that test. Oh, oh, you took the wrong one. Hey Mac, you're up. <laughs> I, I mean, out of what we've seen Belichick do in the past, we would not put it past him. But maybe it may, may have to look a little deeper into that contract and see what the fine print says. Yeah. 